I'm Jordan Boswell. I oversee programming here at Blog Her. I'm personally super excited to announce our next segment, Winning Women. These two women are best friends, and they started in the gym, and what began as, you know, friendships, girls, working out together, has evolved into a really impressive fitness and lifestyle brand and community of empowered women supporting each other through fitness. So, without further ado, please welcome to the stage Karina Dawn and Katrina Scott of Tone It Up. <laughs> All right, hi everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us at our little fireside chat, Sans Fire. I am Liz Moody. I am the food director at Mind Body Green, which is an amazing health and wellness website. I also have a cookbook coming out April 9th, Healthier Together. And um, I host a podcast called Healthier Together Too, which I call it like a podcast where I interview people to find out, it's kind of the, like I'll have what she's having podcast. I want to figure out how to take her amazingness and put it in my life. So that is why. I actually do that. Whenever she <laughs> orders any food, <laughs> I panic. Order, I order for you. I know. It's either that or I look at the waiter and I'm like, Whatever she's having. Whatever she wants. <laughs> so I'm so excited to be up here with Karina and Katrina because I feel like you guys are the ultimate I'll have what she's having women. Like everybody wants what you're having full stop, top to bottom. So I think we're just going to try to figure out what that is right now. All right. All right yeah. Right. Okay. So there's something we were talking about. I wasn't actually planning on asking this, but we were talking about this in the green room and I was thinking about it after today. We've been hearing a lot of people who've been turning their passion into successful businesses. And I was asking you guys, because you were talking about passions you have that are not your business, but you did turn your fitness passion into a hugely successful business. How do you think you know the difference between when a passion should just be a passion and a hobby and when it should be a business and a brand? Yeah, we both have a ton of passions. I mean, even when I was a kid, yes, I wanted, I always knew I'd grow up and be in the fitness industry, but I also wanted to be an artist um, a vet. I love art as a hobby. I have three pets. So one of them is here. Yes, Skunk is here. <laughs> Wait, say the thing where you have a cat named Monkey. A cat named Monkey, a dog named Skunk, and a best friend named Cat. It's very confusing. <laughs> it's cute, right? <laughs> it's it is crazy that uh, you know we're not just fitness, and it, it was really neat when we met because we're both so passionate about art. I almost went to college for art, and I chose to just take all my extra classes and art and drawing and painting and um, we have painting and wine nights which we haven't done that in a while we should do it yeah um, but sometimes if you want something to be sacred and something that you have for yourself you can keep that and it doesn't have to be your work and sometimes you have to also be mindful of that you know if, if for fitness it just made so much sense and I always wanted to be in fitness too and when Karina and I met it made sense um, and then when we want to drink a couple too many glasses of wine and have fun together, then we paint. And that should not, no one should ever see that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but it is there. But um, I think also with the passion, we, if you have a message behind it, and that was kind of why we really took the, our biggest passion of fitness because there was a message behind it of living your healthiest, happiest life and how fitness can really transform you. And I think that's something that a lot of women needed and still need. Would you say a great way to tell the difference is to figure out if you have a message behind what you're trying to do, and if you maybe don't, you just enjoy it, that should stay with the hobby side, and if you have a message you're trying to share, that should maybe be a business? Perhaps, but even with you wanting to be a novelist, and... I shared my life dreams <laughs> back in the game. But you are, and you probably still write novels on, you know, on your free time, but you're still a writer, and you have two great best-selling books. Well, I'm, I'm just assuming your next April one. Is, <laughs> April 9th, bestseller. You know, so that's still your passion of writing and you're getting a message out there. And you're able to intertwine your passions into whatever you choose to do. So um, if you want to incorporate writing into what you do, which you do, then you do it. And there's a certain aspect of art and uh our passions for animals <laughs> that go into it's all into it up. <laughs> I love that though. I love the idea of realizing you can do something that's passion adjacent, but not necessarily a hundred percent your passion thing. And I think people forget about those types of careers a lot. Okay, so let's talk about Tone It Up and the incredible, you guys have built such a wonderful community. And I think that community is one of the things that is so often underlooked in wellness. I think it's incredibly important. How do you, now that you guys do have so many people paying attention to everything you share and do, how do you guys think about 
what you're sharing? Do you think about it a lot more? Is it scary? I'm particularly thinking about some of the posts that you've shared recently that have been, so many of my mom friends have expressed to me that it meant the world to them that you shared that type of stuff. What was going through your head before you shared? She shared these very, do you want to just tell what you shared and what you were thinking before? Yeah, um, so anyone here also a mom? Yes. <laughs> How about first time mom? Like within months? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, as women, we're like, you know, we get to control what we put in our bodies. When we work out, we get can really control even how we navigate through the entire day. And going into pregnancy, I, I knew that I would have to completely surrender. And Karina has taught me this so much, is that you have to be good up here before anything else happens. And so I knew going into pregnancy, I had to stay in check, you know, Things are going to change. My body is going to change. Um, things are going to happen. Even though I'm surrounded by doctors and amazing people, you have to also surrender that, you know, whatever happens is going to be the best for your baby And at the end of the day, as long as the baby's healthy. And so navigating all of that and completely losing control and just going like this open to all of it was amazing actually and I embraced every new curve every new dimple um, all of the body changes and then post baby I know that there's a certain angle or a certain filter that you can put on Instagram but Karina and I we share everything there's not anything that we don't share I don't share nude photos <laughs> well you actually have accidentally <laughs> I oh yeah <laughs> yeah we deleted within a few seconds. I actually deleted my, or deleted, well, I did delete it, but I uploaded my nipple the other day. It was like <laughs> pumping and I was like talking and then I realized and it showed like 600 people and I'm like, 600 people saw this and didn't message me? <laughs> Free the nipple. <laughs> Free the nipple. Free the nipple. Normalize, normalize pumping, breastfeeding, all of it. Um, but I will probably lose track too because I have mommy brain. But, um, but I think that we really owe it to ourselves as women to be so raw and just honest with each other about our journeys. And so I could have been like, here's my snapback, but I think it's really important to show each other what we're truly going through. And there are so many women within the community that told me exactly what they went through and messaged me throughout my pregnancy and said, hey, this is what I went through. So I just, I felt like you know, we never want to hide behind Instagram. We really want to share exactly what our stories are, what our struggles are. And so, um, you know, I just really wanted to share what I was going through. <laughs> were you nervous when you were taking photos of your postpartum body? Were you, was there a part of you that judged it or was afraid to share it with hundreds of thousands of people? Within our community, I feel like we've never been nervous to share anything because everyone embraces and just loves and roots I mean, each other on. So. Your body looks banging. I'm just going to say, <laughs> Thanks, she honey. just had a baby. I don't know if you've seen this. <laughs> Thanks. Really sore boobs right now. I was just pumping in the back. Um, yeah, right before. It's, you know, it's still, I think it's hard to put yourself out there because you never know how people really will react. But I feel like we're so close with our tone up community that um, I just was like, okay. And then even to have my husband take these pictures, like he was just like, you look beautiful. And like, you know, so I didn't really feel nervous. Do you think there is a line for people who are just sort of starting their Instagram lives or their influencer lives? Do you think there's a line and a way to tell between being inspirational or aspirational and being really authentic and giving people that real? I think everybody in this world now is moving more towards authenticity. And so I think there's a craving for that. And I think a lot more people in Instagram are being more authentic. I think everyone has a voice and everyone is trying to relate. And when you share a story that isn't, you know, perfection, I always say uh, perfection is a prison. Like you change people's lives and that's when you can really impact someone is if you're telling the truth and been like, I, I went through something, I'm going through something, I did it, you can do it. And that's when you really inspire someone. That perfectly leads into my next question. You've also been really open recently about mental health, which I think is such an important topic that's often overlooked in the wellness industry. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, how mental health impacted your childhood and then how it impacts you today? Yeah, so when I was a child, my mom was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. And back then, it, I was alone and I was embarrassed and I didn't have enough information and knowledge to even 
kind of figure out how to live my life as a teenager. So that led me into my own 10 years of depression and drug abuse and living in fear. And so now I try to speak more about mental health. And I finally, finally did after 10 years of being in the wellness industry and finally speaking about it. And so many women are coming and connecting and be like, oh my gosh, I've experienced that too. I myself or my family member. So just opening up that door is so important because we really do believe that it starts in the mind and then it goes to the body and it goes into the rest of your life. We're yeah, I never, I was like always healthy food, healthy food, healthy food, and I never worked out. And I anxiety is my number one sort of health struggle. Yeah. And I was shocked when I started just doing 20, 30 minutes a day. The effect on my anxiety was insane. It was yeah. palpable. Yeah, in my early 20s, I got back into fitness. I was like, oh, I, I've got to break this cycle. What is it? And I remembered when I was 12 years old and I ran a half marathon. And I was like, that was the last time I was happy. So I signed up for a race. I did it. I accomplished it. And from then on, I knew that I could do anything I put my mind to. I also think it's so much easier to motivate yourself to work out if it's for like immediate benefits. I'm going to feel better today rather yeah. than I'll look some way somewhere down the line. Yeah. And so many people ask us like, when do I see results? Once I start working out, I'm like, immediately you're glowing, you feel better. And that's like what it's all about. And we've, um, someone we know always said, happy, wait, what is it? Fit people, happy people are fit. <laughs> that's it. It's whatever you're holding on to, you're going to hold on here. And um, that resonated with us because it was right before we were going on tour and, you know, we were like, we were really nervous. We traveled 15 cities and um, we wanted to meet every single girl that we could. And we were just going through a lot and to leave our office even for that long. It was just, it was a lot of stress. And, you know, we were like, okay, we really want to be in really good shape. Um, not physic, like looking wise, but we had to work out and talk. <laughs> <laughs> which was very physically demanding. And someone told us, you know, well, happy people are fit people. So you will be in shape for this tour if you just check yourself. Be yeah, happy. Mentally in shape. And we had to, we had a strict regimen. It's like, okay, meditate every morning yeah. on the plane. Listen to the meditation. Music. Yeah, I was going to ask, do you guys have like mental health sanity practices? Because you work, I read an interview where you work like 100 hours a week or something like that. Do you do stuff other than working out to stay sane? Yeah, I have a very strict schedule. <laughs> She's very good, you guys. Like, okay, if, run us through it really if quick. If we can all start our day like Karina done, no, we'd I, all be really happy people. I, I wake up, and I have to meditate and work out, and then I schedule the rest of my day. And some days you miss it, and that's okay. But after, like, if I miss it two, three days, like, I definitely start to get in a little slump. So I have to for myself. And you? And for, for me, I feel like... Meditation can be a lot of different things. So if you're in a meditative state, you can go for a run. Anything where you're focused on your breath and you're in your physical body and any thought that comes to you, you can just, you know, acknowledge it and then keep going and focus on your intentions for the day. And so there's a lot of different, you may not even realize when you meditate. And so I do Karina's meditations, but I also feel like I actually meditate in the shower, even just the repetitive water on me. And I think about three things that I want to have for the day. So one word for myself and two that I feel like everyone around me needs. So it might be strength and then acknowledgement and inspiration would be Love the that. two. And you do that every day? Yeah, I do the three when words every showers. day. When she showers. When I shower. every day. If she showers. <laughs> now as a new mom, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I also have the door open with a now a baby and a little dock -a So, um, But yeah, I love Karina's, uh, uh, her meditations that are in our app and they're so easy to just do. And um, I think that even painting for us has been a form of meditation. If you, if you can do anything where you just kind of get out of yourself and think about something that you need. I think one of the really special elements of your guys's brand, which you can see on stage here, is the dynamic between the two of you. You guys are clearly best friends. You love each other Hi. so much. Can you guys, and there's so many positive elements about building a brand with somebody. Can you guys share a few hiccups or not so positive elements that you ran into building your brand together and then how you worked through them? Well, the one positive, I'm going to start with the positive. <laughs> Do a sandwich, a sandwich. Yeah. Just because building a brand together, you get to share the highs and the lows and we got almost 30 podcasts here. You know how that is. Um, but yeah, it's just sharing that experience with each other has been really great. So the negatives, I don't know. It's, it's like one or two little hiccups yeah, that you guys ran into. It is amazing that we get to, when we rise together, we rise together. And when we fall, we, we always have each other. And um, there have been so many times that have been so stressful, but 
Yeah, it's funny. Like, you can't even think of it because we had each other to hold and we, each other through Yeah, it. we carried each other through it. So, yeah. And I, I love things that kind of trip you up because then you learn and you grow and things aren't supposed to be perfect. Um, Do you think there's a way to know if a person will be a good business, like this positive of a relationship as you're building a business with them from the beginning? I mean, just surround yourself with good people that you connect with. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, you have an intuition. So follow that from the beginning. We almost knew... Pretty much right I, away. We moved in together a month after meeting each other. <laughs> and the first year of Tone It Up, we were roommates. And I lived with you and your boyfriend, now husband, at the time. Yeah, now he's my husband. I think that if you meet someone who's really mindful and respectful and inspirational and the two of you can do that, then you can make magic together. So. You guys have built such a huge brand, and there's so many fitness brands out there, and you're obviously so much more than fitness now. Are there, what, did you guys know you were different from the beginning? Did you feel like something made you stand out from the crowd? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just, like, when we got together and we had this energy, and we immediately knew there was a synergy, and we had this passion, and each of our lives was changed through fitness. And we both were already in the fitness industry prior, so we've been in it for a while. And we're like, let's make this bigger and better and build a community together. And we met the old-fashioned way, just in the gym. And a lot of you have probably heard our story, but you know, we had to go up to each other and actually introduce our, ourselves to each other. Now um, we can just meet online. And, and we actually realized that fitness at the time, 10 years ago, was very harsh. It was very... Um, you know, boot camp style and how to get rid of this, how to fix this on your body. And it was a lot of body shaming before that was even a thing. And uh, there, was, there, was a there was a lot of community stuff out there where you get together with a group of women, you might weigh yourself or anything like that, or how much did you lose this week? But there was nothing that we could just connect like this and meet someone who has the same vibe as you and wants to do cool things. And you might have different unique journeys, but you can share your goals and just lift each other up. And we were like, let's do it. Let's create a community and let's make it positive. And from day one, we never did a workout that will ever fix something and ever get rid of anything. We don't count calories. We don't talk about losing weight. Um, we have always embodied that. Um, and you see it when you go to Tone Up. And everything that we do is very intentional. And yeah. when you go there, it's just, you, you feel it. And you feel beautiful because we say, hey, beautiful. You know, there's just, the, there's certain things that we've been doing for, since day one. Yeah, but we always knew it was there. It was in us. And trust me, the first few years, we went for broke. We were, like, asking our parents for money. So it was just Thanks, sticking Mom to it, <laughs> sticking to your passion and just knowing that if you stick to something, it'll, it'll come to fruition. Okay, so we're running out of time, but I want to ask you guys, is there one sort of more broader, esoteric piece of advice you could give somebody who wanted to start a business? Like, believe in yourself, and then one super specific, like, learn Excel, or something like that from each of you. Yes, I had to learn that. <laughs> Gosh. Starting a business, you have to have, you have to do every role, and then hire someone smarter than you. Once you get to that point, hire smarter, because you get to certain point where we were like what how we're growing how do we do this I'm not I can't do it well enough and I would say that that we've had every single job at our company and now we have over 50 employees an amazing team here tone team tone it up where are you at <laughs> <laughs> and part of my language they're fucking brilliant they're brilliant girls that they're you know when we did it, you were doing QuickBooks and I was editing videos. I was, I was doing, doing graphics, accounting. HTML. Like, just <laughs> we shouldn't be doing that. And so, <laughs> it worked. If you look at some of our old graphics, you're like, wow. <laughs> I can see that you were doing that yourself. Um, but yeah, never be afraid to do everything yourself and learn it. You're never, you know, not too good to do something, but just. Get your hands dirty, get in it, and know that you can. And no one's going to have the passion that you do in the beginning. And then as soon as it starts to grow, then you get to attract people who really are so smart and so passionate about your brand. And then you get to do it together. And then you have dream careers together. And it's really, really cool. So if you're just starting out or you're kind of just in this in this moment where you're unsure, just push through and know that you absolutely can because it is your dream. I love that. Do you know, how did you know when it was time to hire somebody? Oh, gosh. It just, 
we had an inbox that was getting crazy, and we just we just it sent, we sensed it. And actually, our first employee is still with us today. Is it seven, shout eight out, years? Yeah, Brian, shout out Lacrone. Brian Lacrone. Eight, eight uh, years now. Eight years now. Wow. It, it's just an instinct. We were like, we need help. We were overwhelmed, overworked, and so we needed to call in some help. At first, I think it was like twelve hour or twelve hours a week. Yeah, That's all we could partner. afford. And you took the job. I know. Which so is amazing. Job. He believed in our message. So. Amazing. Yeah. Well, we all believe in your message. And we thank you guys so much for joining us here today. You guys are wonderful and fun, too, which is fun. Thanks. Thanks, thank guys. Thank you so much, thank guys. You. <laughs>